So hello everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining today. We have a good group and my name is Cassie Skobrak. I'm a reference librarian at the Westerly Library and this is um, now our third meeting of the Older Adult Hour. So we're really enjoying the program. Good opportunity to share some of the resources and the different services in town. And today, of course, we have a few people from the Westerly Village here to talk about it. And I will introduce them in, well, I'll, I'll turn it over to them a little bit later. But first things first, I just want to go through and do a short round of introductions. Um, I think probably the best way is to just, I'll kind of call out people on my screen. So if you just want to say your name um, and what brought you here today, that would be great. So I'll start with Sarah Cody. Hi, everybody. Sarah Cody, I'm the Director of Social Services at the Johnny Cake Center of Westerly and here to talk about the village today. We're very excited. Thank you, Lori. Hi, I'm Lori Meisner. I'm retired and frequent volunteer at Johnny Cake Center. Uh, Sarah exposed me to this concept and somehow got me to become co-lead. <laughs> I'm very excited with the progress we're making. I'm very happy to be here. Suzanne. I have to, have to get off mute first. I'm Suzanne <laughs> Francis, a former Westerly uh, resident and at the moment president of the Village Common of Rhode Island. And I'm delighted to be here with this group of people today. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. I just want to note before we really get started that I'm going to be taking notes throughout the meeting. And when I do send out the recording, I'll send all of the notes, any contact information along with it. So don't feel like you have to scramble during the meeting to write anything down, you will get it. Okay. And if you are viewing this on our YouTube um, channel, the information will be in the summary for the YouTube video as well. So you can get it there. Um, so on that note, I think I'm going to turn things over to Sarah and Lori to talk about the Westerly Village, um, which we're excited right. to hear about. Thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So bear with me one second. Beautiful. All right. So as we've been discussing, um, thanks all, all for coming and for your interest in the Westerly Village. We're really excited to be sharing about this today. Um, I know we've already kind of done our introductions. Um, just as a reminder, I'm from the Johnny Cake Center of Westerly. Lori is one of our co-leads along with Doug um, for our steering committee. And um, Suzanne is here representing the Village Common of Rhode Island, who we've been working very closely with throughout this process. So um, yeah, we're happy to be here. And um, you know, we're going to basically go through um, some, some general information about the village, what a village is, what the Westerly Village intends to assist with, what it may mean to be a member or a volunteer, next steps, and, and certainly we'll have time for discussion, questions, comments, and, and please feel free to um, ask as we go as well. No worries at all about that. So, so what is a village? Um, so a village, um, and Suzanne and Lori, please feel free to jump in as I go to, um, a village is a concept that exists in many other areas already. Um, there's actually different towns throughout Rhode Island that already have villages in place. Um, so basically what a village is, it's a community of mutual support for older adults aging in place. Um, so it becomes this really intricate network of neighbors helping neighbors with resources, with support, with social connection, um, events and programming. Um, it really becomes a very close knit network of individuals helping each other with whatever it feels they may need assistance with. Um, so the basic idea of it is that the village is comprised of volunteers, who are providing services. Um, there are members who receive services. Um, many members are also volunteers and vice versa. And um, the Village Common of Rhode Island, um, which is a nonprofit which Suzanne can speak um, to shortly, is kind of our overarching nonprofit that helps different towns to um, develop their villages and um, becomes very involved in kind of connecting members and volunteers and, and playing a really important role in that process. All right, Suzanne, would you like to speak a little bit about the Village Common of Rhode Island? The Village Common of Rhode Island is a, uh, an umbrella organization for villages that are either developing or in place in the state. And at the moment, there are three active villages. Providence was the original. Barrington and Edgewood, and we are eager to welcome Westerly to the fold. So um, there, this group of villages all 
uh, are part of the Village Common, which is the central organization, uh, 501c3 not-for-profit, that provides the systems and the financial management and so on and programming uh, to support all of the villages. So um, I think that Westerly is well along this path and we are really delighted that they're here and delighted that those of you are, who are new to the idea are here today to learn more about it. If there's Sorry. specific questions later, I'm happy to answer them, but let's go on. Sure. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, so the Westerly Village. So as we've mentioned, this is something we've been kind of working on over the past six or eight months or so um, with our steering committee. I'm thinking it might be helpful to go back a little bit just to kind of explain how we've gotten to this place, um, how we decided to pursue a Westerly Village um, and the progress we've made so far. So um, the Westerly Village is really kind of stemming from an initiative called Age Friendly Westerly, which encompasses a variety of different organizations individuals from the Westerly area um, working to um, assist with needs of older adults, whatever that may be. There's a variety of different areas such as housing and transportation, social connection, um, which happens to be many of the different areas that the village um, can assist with. So when we learned about the village idea um, in one of our meetings, it just kind of came up very naturally. You know, we were really excited and, and kind of chose to jump on the idea. And that's when we were connected with the village common. Um, and we've started this process um, of connecting with different people, sharing what we're looking to do. Um, as you've heard from others, we've developed our steering committee, um, which is about 10 or 12 of us who have been meeting on a regular basis to really um, talk about what a westerly village may look like. Um, and that also means kind of, you know, looking at the different data in the area, looking at research studies that have come out, showing what the needs are that are unique to this community. Um, so some of that includes things like um, assistance with housing, assistance with connecting to resources, um, you know, social connection is a big piece as well and how we can really help to, to build that up in our area. Um, yeah, so we're, we're really excited to build that in and also explore all the different resources that do already exist in the area and how we can complement those rather than duplicate anything that already exists. Um, so the phase we're really in right now is we're really excited and getting ready to really make a Westerly Village a reality in the next few months. So we're very, very excited. Um, we're at a place now where we've really started to dial in which services we're going to be offering. Um, and again, really kind of working with what agencies already exist, what is already happening, how can we fill certain gaps? Um, so with that being said, some of the services that we're planning on offering um, include transportation. So that can be medical appointments, it might be shopping, and might be personal care. Um, we're hoping to offer transportation at different time points in the day. So um, early morning, evenings, weekends um, to places of worship, things like that. Um, household maintenance, so things like um, small repairs, household chores, um, both indoors and outdoors, acknowledging that, um, you know, sometimes outdoor um, maintenance can become very cumbersome. Um, so we're hoping to assist as that as well. Um, errands and grocery assistance with so things like picking up groceries, um, helping with shopping, um, social connection, which I know we've talked about a bit already. So things like friendly visits, planning different events, different clubs around, you know, say book clubs or walking clubs, um, different village outings, perhaps to restaurants, things like that. Um, and then also technology support we've acknowledged is very important for this area as well. So how can we assist with um, cell phones and computers and Zoom trainings? And you know, if something happens with internet, how can we help brainstorm that with someone um, and TVs as well? The differences between a Westerly Village and say all those other resources Sarah referred to that are out there, we've had a lot, we've done a lot of research on this, is mm -hmm. uh, those resources are one directional you know, somebody providing a service and also to not a very diverse group of people. This is intended to be a mutual organization of, of giving and receiving to a mm -hmm. much wider variety of Westerly residents as, as we're starting out and, um, and to serve as a single point of access. So I was listening to Debbie and Linda and I remember when I moved here and I know when Sue moved here, 
to have a single source you can go to to find out what's up, what's available, what can I access uh, is huge. Even for our own steering committee, we had to do a bunch of pulling together of information to provide that and we're in the business. So for anybody new to the area or moving from one neighborhood to another, um, this could be all new information. So I think the single point of contact is, is very helpful here. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Lori. Now, I know I'm going to talk at some length about volunteering uh, in a couple of slides, but I just wanted to jump in with that point. Sure. So before we jump into volunteering, I'll speak a bit about what membership means and what that looks like. Um, so anyone is welcome to join as a member. Um, you know, we're still kind of forming exactly what we're going to offer initially. Acknowledge we don't want to necessarily bite off more than we can choose. What we're thinking right now is we'll initially be offering this to Westerly residents. You do not have to be a full-time year-round um, resident of Westerly. You can also be a part-time member as well. Um, it's not necessarily age exclusive. You know, we do acknowledge that primarily older adults may want to receive and benefit from these services, but if there is someone else who feels that they could benefit from this as well and, and would like to be a part of the village, you know, we're certainly happy to to have them as part of it. Um, there is a membership fee um, and perhaps Suzanne could speak a little more about this as well, but, but no one is necessarily turned away. So basically you determine your own amount, amount per month that works for you. Um, and that would be through a process of working with a village ambassador who would sit down with you and, and kind of talk through your needs, your interests and um, what fee may work for you as well. Um, Suzanne, do you have anything you wanna add about that? Uh, only to say that I, I think Sarah has done a good job of explaining it. We have what we call a tiered membership. And I think if you think of the dues as support for the organization that provides the coordination of volunteers, the matching of volunteers to members, uh, programming, uh, research and resources, those are the kinds of things that are done um, with the dues that people pay. And by the way, the dues represent about, I, I wanna say between 30 and 40% of the cost of maintaining um, the village common and the villages. So the remaining money is raised through uh, contributions and fundraising events and grants, which uh, we have received some generous funds during the startup period, but it's smaller now. The, the graduated scale that we use uh, invites people to participate by paying dues at one of three levels. And then there is a fourth choice that says, uh, this is the amount I feel comfortable paying on either a yearly or a monthly basis. And the aim here is that we want everyone who wants to be a member to be a member at a level that is financially comfortable for them. Yeah, absolutely. If, oh. if I can uh, su support what Suzanne's saying too, it, it, in some cases, I think our members are gonna find that this actually is not an additional financial burden to them if they're paying for transportation now, for example, and we can provide it through a volunteer basis with no fees, no tipping, none of that associated. They, it, it could be a wash, it could even be uh, savings because part of the goal of the volunteer program is to fulfill a member's request before they have to contact a private for fee service provider. So um, it, it's not all one directional mm. point there. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, you know, a couple more things just to highlight in terms of membership is, you know, everyone is encouraged to engage in what works for your lifestyle um, and for your needs. So if you feel like you could benefit from transportation assistance, but don't really need anything else and you want to offer assistance with a walking club, that would be great. Um, if you don't want to volunteer and you just want to be a member, that's great, too. If you just want to be a volunteer, um, you know, in what works for you, whatever, you know, feel fits into your lifestyle, you know, we welcome all of it. Um, and as we've mentioned, members can be volunteers too. Um, and Lori's gonna talk a little bit more too about what exactly that means. Yeah, so I really, I'm really excited about the village concept of a volunteer. As I said, I've been volunteering with Johnny Cake and others for a lot of years, but this is different. It's different because normally you sign up to be a volunteer at a particular place, time, you make a commitment, and you go there every week or every you know couple of days. This isn't that. This is a much more flexible volunteering program. 
And it allows for people who don't even live in Westerly or are snowbirds to engage, people with very active lives already or who are already volunteering somewhere occasionally. Uh, all of those people can still be volunteers here because it works differently. So what would happen is if you're interested, you'd fill out this application, you get, you do have to undergo a background screen um, and you do get vetted. Uh, and then the volunteer coordinator from the Village Common talks with you to find out more about what you like to do, what you don't like to do. For example, if you offer to provide transportation, you might say, but I don't wanna transport anybody's pets <laughs> you know, or I don't wanna drive at night or I'm, I'm an early bird or um, weekends are fine with me or not. So that, that's just a transportation example, but um, it, you get sort of interviewed to find out what you'd be most common providing as a volunteer and when, and then when there's an opportunity, the volunteer coordinator puts a message out to everyone who kind of fits that bill and someone raises their hand. It might, you might raise your hand, you might be too late. You might not even get that one. Uh, or you might be first and, and you get called on. Uh, so there's a great deal of flexibility. If you're not interested in providing that service on that day or that time, you just don't take it on. So it's a very different, very flexible volunteer experience, partly because we want this to be a positive experience for volunteers too, and not a, not a burden or um, overly uh, difficult to, uh, to provide. We do also hope that volunteers and members will become friendly and maybe even become friends. Uh, still, you would go through the coordinator to get your services. We need to make sure we can manage that effectively and know we're, we're meeting our obligations. But part of the goal of the village is to have, is to expand your own social network and your, your friendship base. So um, it, it feeds that as well. Mm -hmm. um, you only have to be 18 or older. There's no, no other age restriction. Um, you get some training. Uh, you don't get tips. <laughs> we don't charge fees for the services. Um, you do have to maintain your own homeowners and auto insurance. Uh, the village common has some additional assurance, uh, which I'm not an expert on. So if Suzanne wanted to jump in, she could there. But those are sort of the highlights of the volunteer aspect of the village. Awesome. And then we just really kind of wanted to dive into next steps. So here's our contact information. Um, and, you know, of course, we want to make, keep time for questions, comments, discussion. Um, but yeah, we just welcome anyone who has some more interest um, in either becoming a member or a volunteer or both. Please feel free to reach out to either myself or Lori. We would be happy to connect you with next steps on how to start this process with us. Um, we're soon going to be starting the training and starting kind of some of these processes um, to make this a reality in the next couple of months, which we're really excited about. Um, but yeah, with that, I'm happy to open it up for questions, discussion, comments, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So I know Cassie will be adding our uh, contact information after. So, yes. great. Thanks, everybody. Just want to say that one of the attractions for me of the village is that an important goal is to enable older adults to stay in their homes. Mm. And this, this to me is a, a very important point to emphasize in attracting members. Hmm. Another thing which uh, I don't think has been mentioned, which is a, is a big, big point for me. And that is the Wesley Village will not be competing with other service agencies mm -hmm. or programs in any way we would look to be part of that network and we would be collaborating and referring to, as opposed to trying to replace or repeat. Uh, I think that's very, very important for people to understand. Uh, and uh, I think that that is unusual and, and unique. We can be matchmakers where members would voice a need and we don't have volunteers that can meet that need, but we certainly can make referrals 
to agencies that are already uh, in the business of providing uh, those services. Uh, and so that's a, that's a referral or matchmaking function, which I think will be very important. And to add to that, Sarah's knowledge from just her work and then our knowledge from the surveys and then follow up just conversations and discussions with these peoples of the, the people of these other agencies who provide services, they've told us we need more. You know, don't worry, you won't be stepping on anyone's toes. We need to supplement what we already have in place. We yeah. welcome you. We're already referring people to you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, to your point, yeah. it's, it's a welcome addition to Wesley, not a competition. Absolutely. And just to expand on that a little bit too, I didn't mention this when I was speaking about the different data and research and things, but we put together a survey, which we shared out to all the different organizations in the area looking for their input, basically saying, these are the services we're thinking of providing. Where do you see a need in the, in the individuals that you're working with? What do you see are the priorities that aren't being met right now? And that's really helped a lot to inform our decision-making on what we're hoping to offer. So we've done a lot of, a lot of work over the past few months to really be very intentional about this. So yeah, that's really a big hope of ours is not to duplicate anything already existing, just to add to it. Um, I'm really glad you explained that part about other agencies because that was one of my biggest um, questions I've had all along. So if there's an alignment, that, that's great. It sounds good. But how many of those other agencies um, charge a fee and how do we get people to understand the benefits of paying it? Because nobody wants to pay for anything, especially when you get older, you kind of figure you're entitled to everything for free. <laughs> but um, so what's the pitch or the strategy to try to build this forum of membership so that we can volunteer? Mm. Well, for one thing, a lot of, let's talk about transportation for a second. A lot of the transportation resources are not free. There's a small charge, a couple dollars each way, something like that. But if you use it several times a week, you know, your, again, your membership fee would, could be that or less. Um, so they're subsidized. They're sometimes difficult to procure or not on the hours you want to go or the places you want to go, that kind of thing. Um, that's where we, we think we would fit in on, for example, transportation. I'm not aware of anybody who offers technology support um, other than ourselves. And there are groups that, that will do some errands sometimes, but it's very limited. And um, we, do, we even through Johnny Cake do some home deliveries of food, but we have a waiting list of people who want help with that, who we aren't able to support yet. And Rotary helps us with this, but it's still not really being met. So there are, there are definitely gaps. And I do think that some people are either paying for services like minor home repairs, maybe some yard stuff that they won't have to if they're members, invitation fits in. Uh, if you order food delivery from like a stop and shop, I believe there's a, a small fee to have it delivered to your home. So these small fees add up you know, over time. I think too, um, just kind of the reliability, the reliability and convenience of the group too, where you sort of whatever you're looking for is within this group. I might be speaking out of turn, but instead of having no. to reach out to five different places for different needs throughout the week, you really can rely on this community that you have built. And there's something I think really important to be said for that. Um, and I just want to note too, I mean, I know that there's no specifics right now for what the costs are because it is very much dependent on what your ability is and what your financial status is. Um, but it, no matter what, it's going to be extremely affordable. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Suzanne, did you want to add something? Uh, I think Cassie actually covered it, but my point was going to be that often the transportation that is available that, that is in the villages that we've worked with, uh, it's rigidly scheduled or it's available only at very limited times and I think uh, or for limited purposes like medical appointments and I think the benefit of the rides programs within the villages is that they are flexible they're tailored to the need of the individual 
Mm -hmm. Somebody's having a party. <laughs> now, when we were talking with uh, the senior center, they were explaining that um, a lot of people would like someone to take them shopping and help them carry their bags. And that that's not a service you know, that they can offer all the time uh, or wait for them if they have a 45 minute hair appointment instead of having to you know, wait for another uh, scheduled bus or, or something to bring them. Um, those are a couple of the areas they said that, and, and they only do rides on certain days of the week. They only go to the mall if they have a full bus load, you know, willing to go, that sort of thing. And we could just take a person to the mall. I want to say thank you, Debbie, for that question. I think that's a really important one. And one that I think a lot of people are thinking. Absolutely. Do we have any more questions, comments? Anything? Um, I have a question about timing. Um, it seems to me that where the village would be very flexible, like last minute calls could be serviced. Um, the service coordinator could get in touch with someone like something came up. I have only two hours to get to a certain place. And as opposed to a, a rigid schedule of this is, we can only provide the service for a certain period of time or at a certain time, like Tuesdays and Thursdays from eight until 12 or something like that. Um, One of the things that we found is that members do best when they make their reservation for a ride uh, sometime in advance. Mm -hmm. I think if we get last minute uh, if in, any village, if there's a last minute request, people will make every effort to fill it. But the chances that you would get a no are greater mm -hmm. if it's very close to the time when right. you need to, to go. So. I guess I'm just thinking that um, it's, it's uh, flexible. We are flexible in that the sense true. of um, we don't say, no, nothing on Wednesday. We don't, we right. can't provide anything on exactly. Wednesday. Um, I think that, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I wondered how, how close, how close you have gotten to actually forming a board and getting into business, in other words. First of all, it's really good to see you. I know it has been a while. So I was excited to see your name. Yeah. Um, so we're really, we're really close. You know, we've got a steering committee of about 12 or 13 residents from the area. And we've been meeting on a regular basis for several months now and really kind of planning our services, planning this process in partnership with Suzanne and the Village Common of Rhode Island. So we're making really, really good progress that we're really excited about. So we're gearing up for probably in the next few months to be doing a soft launch of services, including signing the MOU with the village. And we're really kind of very close to be putting all these steps together. So right now we're in the phase of really inviting anyone who's interested in becoming a volunteer or a member to contact us so we can start some of those processes um, of training and, and all of that. So yeah, we're really close. Very good. Um, I had just a quick question and you can absolutely say no, Sarah, but would you be willing to share this PowerPoint to send out to participants? Today? Absolutely. Okay, I think it would be good to kind of look back on, there's a lot of great information there, so thank you. I'll email it to you. Okay, great. And then another thing I just wanna mention um, is that if you are interested in looking at the other villages that are out there, especially in the state, you can visit um, providencevillageri.org. And that is again, Suzanne Francis was talking about the umbrella organization. Um, and it gives a little bit of information about the other villages that are in Rhode Island. So if you have any questions like that, or you just want to take a look, it's, I think, a good resource. You can, you can also go to, I believe it's www.villagecommonri.org. And that will take you to the Village Common website directly, I think. It didn't at first, but it does now. So Perfect. Um, Thank That'll you. get you there as well. Okay, thank you, Suzanne. And again, I'll be sending <laughs> these links out to you. And, and by the way, there are many of the activities that the Village Common supports these days on Zoom, I'm sorry to say, but at least we have Zoom, um, that 
people are welcome to participate in. And I look around, Sue and I often <laughs> compare notes on the yoga class, which is terrific. Hey, but there are other activities. And if you, if one looks interesting, call the service coordinator and ask to be a guest. So Fantastic. give it a try. I attend the yoga class three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nine to 10 o'clock. Well, really quarter of nine to 10, 15, if you stay for everything and it's free. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic, right, Suzanne? It is, <laughs> she's amazing. Yeah. Uh, are we in any way connected with the town of Westerly about what the plans are? Uh, are is the Chamber of Commerce, for example, supportive of the, the work that we're doing? And I ask that because as an example, you just talked about free yoga classes. Well, I'm sure there's somebody out there losing money because we're giving, we're doing it for free, free or something. So I'm, and I'm not saying the yoga teacher's doing it for free. I know she's not probably, but um, you know, if I drive somebody that takes transportation money away from the local taxi service, um, I don't know, is there an alignment with the town or do we even work with them in any way? I'm just curious. Yeah, so that's one nice benefit of, of some of this stemming from Age Friendly Westerly. It is really a great collaboration of a lot of different local agencies, including the town. Um, so, you know, so they're very aware of, of what we're doing. Um, every month on the Age Friendly meeting, I usually present updates on, um, on, on the progress that we're making. So they're very aware of what we're doing. Yeah, which has been really great to have them a part of. Um, it's a good question because this is the first village uh, in Rhode Island that has had this kind of a beginning. And one of the things it does is to bring um, people like Cassie and Sarah and the uh, chief of police, a member of the town council, um, hospital representatives. It brings all of these people together. And as a result of their looking at how do you help older adults with things like staying in their own homes, transportation, um, home assistance. Those kinds of things were all addressed upfront. And mm -hmm. I think that the support for this idea was quite remarkable. And I think that it put, it put Westerly on a much sounder footing than um, I, I should have mentioned also the senior center. Um, that those organizations were all part, part of the decision to explore the possibility of a Westerly village. So your question is a good one and it isn't a perfect answer, but I think this group has a much better footing as a result of that. And I think, I think Laurie and, and um, Sarah would agree with that, but uh, it, it's quite remarkable. I feel better about that. That's good. <laughs> Good question again. Yes, Margie. I wondered, um, oh dear. <laughs> I was thinking of the last answer and I forgot my question. Um, oh, I know. Is the, is the survey available, whom it went to and its results? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I'm happy to. I'm happy to share that with you. Um, we put together kind of a brief um, overview of the results we received from that from that particular organizational input one. Um, we put together kind of a brief overview to share with our steering committee as part of kind of our um, decision making process. So yes, um, that is available, and I'd be happy to share it with you. Well, this has been really fantastic. Um, thank you so much, Sarah and Lori. Stevie, Doug, Suzanne, everybody who came to talk about the village. I think it was a lot of really good information. I think it cleared things up um, for a lot of people. And of course, if anybody does have follow-up questions, if you're interested in joining as a volunteer, as a member, as both, um, absolutely reach out to Sarah and I'll provide that, that information as well. So thank you again, we appreciate it. Yeah, great. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Yes. Of course, yeah. great invitation. All righty. Uh, All right. So we're gonna we're gonna you're welcome to um, pop off if you are. I know everybody's very busy, but really quickly before we finish up, I just wanted to share my screen really quickly um, because I know that a few things have been coming up um, 
numerous times really. And one is that need for like social programs. Um, and especially we're all looking for in-person opportunities to meet up, which are still very few and far between right now. Um, and another thing that we're noticing is that there's a need for, um, for technology help. So I just wanted to show you our calendar here. So this is westerlylibrary.org, that's our website. And if you go to events and then full calendar, you can see our calendar of all of the month. It's gonna load. One good thing I just wanna show is up on this top left corner is you can go and um, filter through. So you can find adult events and you can filter it by tag. So if you're looking for health and fitness events or if you're looking for personal finance, um, for arts, anything like that, you can click on that and click apply and it'll show you only those programs on our calendar, which I think is really useful. Um, but I want to point out specifically, every Wednesday at 1230, we do have this virtual tech support hour, um, well, hour and a half. And so that's with our technology department. It's through Zoom right now. Um, hopefully, eventually, we'll be meeting in person again. Um, but that's a good opportunity to log on and talk to our technology department and talk to other people who are joining the meeting about any questions you might have, whether it's specific to like Zoom or a certain website, your phone. Um, really anything. And they're willing to sit down and help you through whatever your question is. And we also are still open to the public. So if you have specific questions, you can give us a call, reach out to us, and we can set up like a one-on-one -on -one time to help you out. So that is always an option. Um, and then what was it? Oh, I wanted to note too, that right now we're not really doing in-person programs. Most of them are online for now, but definitely keep looking at our website because we do expect that within, I mean, at some point things will be changing when things open up. And starting in June, the one thing we do have planned is we're going to be holding a um, walking club. It'll be weekly in the park. It'll be socially distanced. And I think it'll be a good opportunity to kind of get together to have that social aspect while also still remaining very safe. Um, so we're gonna be updating the calendar, hopefully in the next few weeks to reflect that. So I just wanted to show you, do I have any questions? Kelsey, actually there's a, a couple of things. You what? might want to show how you can move to under adult to the older adult. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, so this is a little bit messy right now. We're in the process of getting a new website, but we did recently add sort of an older adult homepage. Um, so you can get to that by going to this adult tab. If you double click on it, it'll bring us to our homepage. And then scroll down and you'll see older adults, this little okay. screen right here. So if you click on click here to learn more, that's mm -hmm. going to be to the older adults homepage. So okay. we have information on the Westerly Village there, um, Sarah's contact information. And we just have a lot of different resources that we've pulled together that are really relevant to older adults in specifically in Westerly and throughout the state. So I think it's a pretty good resource. We're always adding to it. Um, so it's, it's a good place to go if you have any questions. And again, as we do redo our website, hopefully we'll have something a little bit more robust and a little bit easier to navigate. I'll just add, um, I was just putting together a calendar for the Winnipeg Cottage newsletter and the park starting in middle of May, starting on Tuesdays, there's going to be a stretching class every Tuesday and every Wednesday is going to be a yoga. You're correct. Park. So I'm going to go to here to the events. Um, I'm going to filter by adult and health and fitness. Hopefully it is all in there. I know, like you said, it was just added. Our yoga in the park is going to be starting on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Maybe. So that's going to be weekly. There's also eccentric stretch in the park, which they did last year, actually, even in the midst of um, COVID, very, very socially distanced. And it was, I mean, I didn't get a chance to go. Hopefully I do this year, but I heard only really rave reviews from it. So it's going to be really good for yeah. This is going the whole summer. Yep. Okay. yep. So if we continue, you'll see those. Um, there's even going to be an added one on Monday. So thank you, Sue, for bringing that up. I've forgotten those were, those were happening. So I think that'll be a good opportunity for those of you that are looking for some kind of um, socialization, but also something nice and healthy to do too. <laughs> All right. Well, again, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Thank you to Sarah. Um, Lori, Suzanne, Doug, Stevie. And I just want to let you know that our next meeting is going to take place May 6th. And during that meeting, we're going to have Nicole Woodward from the Senior Center joining us to talk about their services. Great. All right. So hopefully we'll see some of you then. All right. Bye.